I'm going to talk a little bit about why I feel so strongly that in order for you to make a ton of cashola, you have to get online. So many of you know that I sell potato chips for a living. I've done that for the past seven years. And like I said, last year I sold over $680,000 worth of chips. And it's interesting um, when you look at how chips are manufactured and all this kind of stuff. And I, I sell them into Walmart and people can basically buy four bags for like 10 bucks. So you can imagine the profit margin. It's pretty slim, pretty slim. But I have, um, I have a meeting with Amazon tomorrow about selling some of my chips online. And I can sell them basically for one bag of chips. I can sell anywhere from 30 bucks a bag. I've seen prices as high as almost $60 a bag. So when you wonder where some of my money is coming from, yeah, it's coming from potatoes. And I have a friend that's actually, he's heavily, heavily invested in Bitcoin right now. Tons tons and so we have some pretty good conversations about that but one thing that uh i've been keeping my eye on and i've been buying a little bit here and there is silver i've always been a big fan of silver maybe it's from reading a book uh, that was written by michael maloney and he's got a website called I believe it's called goldensilver.com. He sells silver. So I've yet to buy from him. I usually just buy silver locally. But I bought it when it was pretty high. It was between 30 bucks and $40. And now it's about $23, the price of silver. And what's interesting is there's a couple of companies that I've been following and uh, one of them is BlackRock. And the other one is Vanguard. And I've had friends approach me about Vanguard and say, hey, if you want to invest, this is a decent company to invest in. Um, but I didn't realize how many things that Vanguard actually had their hands in. And same thing with BlackRock. If you think about, and this could be a little bit of an exaggeration, so take it for what it is. But if you think about BlackRock and Vanguard, it could be said that they own about 98% of the wealth in the world. So if you look up BlackRock, you can see they have their hands in basically everything. One of our competitors is Pepsi, Pepsi Cola, Free to Lay. And Vanguard actually, or BlackRock, actually owns shares in both Pepsi and Coca Cola. And you would think that they're competitors. It was kind of interesting that. I created a, a video basically on how to price your products and how to create products out of thin air using a board game Monopoly. Monopoly is an interesting board game. If you haven't played it, I would strongly encourage you to play it. In North America, monopolies are considered illegal. It's illegal to monopolize everything, even though when you look at some of the social media channels like Google, they're basically a monopoly. 
when you think about it. They also own YouTube. And this is one of the reasons why I have mixed feelings about YouTube, but I like YouTube from a business perspective because it can actually override any website. If you, if you make a video that's decent enough and you do the, the description right and the tags and everything, you can actually bump yourself up other people's websites, which is kind of cool. And then if you want to do ads and all this kind of stuff, you can do that. But there, but Google's basically a monopoly. There's Bing. I don't even, I can't tell you the last time I've been on Yahoo. I don't even know what their, their share prices are at right now. But the point of this is there are monopolies out there. They just play a little bit of a shell game where they'll create other companies or maybe they'll create nonprofit organizations, which really at the end of the day, some of these nonprofit organizations are multi hundred million dollar organizations. So just because they say nonprofit doesn't mean they're not making a lot of money. So it's sometimes what the, some of these companies do is they'll actually donate some of their money into other businesses and that way they can't be taxed on it and all this kind of stuff and and you, you don't have to dec- disclose uh, who your ta- who your donations are coming from where your donations are coming from which is kind of interesting so when I mentioned silver silver right now like I said is about 23 and it's been stabilized at about 23 for a while I'm going to just kind of keep an eye on it. And I'm thinking about buying some more silver just because right now everybody's running to Bitcoin. And I don't know who coined this phrase. Coined. It's interesting. I don't know who coined this phrase when your neighbor is basically telling you to buy Bitcoin that you should basically run in the other direction. Or if they're telling you, hey, this is the next greatest thing and they're getting into it, it's almost like it's too late. Now, Bitcoin is about $73,000 right now. And I bought some pieces of Bitcoin back in 2015, I believe it was. And I thought... I was insane because it was too high. It was like 17 grand. I'm like, this is, this is nuts. And it was just climbing, climbing, climbing. So then I just, I'm like, I'm out. I just left it alone and walked away from it. And uh, I still have money in Binance and Coinbase and all that, but I just left it alone. I'm like, I, I can't ride this stuff up and down. And now it's like, over $70,000. So terrified to look at my Coinbase to see what's going on in there with Ether and a few other coins. But really, six years ago, I didn't believe in it. I was just like, this is a scam. This has to be a scam. But anyways, silver. I think uh, I think silver is a safe place. It's my humble opinion. You can probably buy it for about 30 bucks right now for one silver coin. I'm not a big fan of the bars. You can get the bars. But I like coins because really, I think at the end of the day, when push comes to shove, people will gravitate towards gold and silver coins because they've been universally traded for hundreds if not thousands of years. So if you think about it, if you invest in Bitcoin, which I'm not trying to discourage anybody from Bitcoin, but this is kind of how I look at it. Nobody knows who has control of that. And I know BlackRock has about $240 million, maybe a little bit more than that in Bitcoin. But they're making a huge play on silver, which is interesting. They sold a bunch of gold. 
and they're making a huge play on silver. And they did this about 2020, just before the pandemic hit. So 2000, yeah, 2020. So right at the beginning. So that's what I kind of look at. I'm like, what are the big players doing? Are they going all in on one thing? Are they, are they scattered? Are they spreading themselves thin? What are they doing? So BlackRock is investing heavily in silver. And I know China has been investing in silver and gold heavily for the past 10 years or so. And in World War II, when the Germans were invading Paris and all these countries, um, France, I should say, and all these countries, the first thing that these countries did was they got rid of their gold. Where did they send their gold? To the US. They sent a lot of their gold to the US, to other countries that were friendly because that was the most valuable thing that they had was gold. And when the Germans got to Paris, that's the first thing they looked for was gold and it was gone. So that would be a movie in itself getting rid of all the gold. So that's, those are just some of my thoughts right now. I think silver, silver is so undervalued right now. It's ridiculous. So that's some of the things I'm going to be looking at over the next few months, just chipping away at it. Pardon the pun, the potato chip part pun. Sometimes I'm just a little chippy that way. Anyways, that's it. Thanks for watching.